I want to start this video with a quote from Hirohiko Araki while speaking about the making of Phantom Blood. Quote, It was hard coming up with the first Joestar. The series had potential to go on, so in my mind I wanted to create a first Joestar that could function as a symbol of purity and dignity, rather than a unique fresh character, which was why he was so difficult to come up with. End quote. So yeah, what's up? This video will probably be the most in-depth analysis of Jonathan's character, since I will talk in depth about how Jonathan finds his way of life, but also how he becomes a symbol of justice as the park goes on, and how that lays a foundation for all other jurors to follow, and as the series is kinda built around the duality between Joestar and Brando beginning in this very part, this will truly be a journey. So if you have any interest in this, then sit back, relax, and let's start the journey of Jonathan Joestar. First and foremost about Jonathan, before his journey for justice truly begins, the kind of foundation of his character is that he strives to become his own definition of a true gentleman, as he carries his Joestar name with pride, never betraying the code of conduct that he says for himself. Since Araki wanted purity and dignity to be the contrast of his antagonist Dio, a gentleman seems like the perfect fit for Jonathan as a character. Now of course, one can talk about Jonathan without also mentioning Dio, as he is incredibly important in shaping Jonathan's way of life. This is evident yet again in a quote from Araki, stating, quote, The title of the series is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, but first and foremost I actually wanted to draw Dio, good and evil, white and black. Jonathan and Dio function as symbols and are foils for one another, end quote. Since Dio and Jonathan's contrast are so strong, I will speak more about him later, but instead for now let's talk about the reasons behind Jonathan's ideology, which lies in his youth. During most of his childhood, Jonathan was a proud troublemaker, but he was mostly an innocent child. Despite already aspiring to be a true gentleman, Jonathan lacked the manners of an aristocrat and he mostly behaved like a regular child. Jonathan's mother, having died before he could remember her, leaving the stone mask as one of the few mementos of her work. This impacted Jonathan since, without the mother, his only figure to look up to and aspire to follow was his father George. Naturally, being raised by only his father, he followed George's gentleman ways. Growing up without the mother, combined with the ostracizing that their fellow boys did towards Jonathan because of his status as a Joestar, left him somewhat lonely for his early years. While at first Jonathan didn't have his future strength or will, the arrival of Dio became the catalyst of his growth by pushing him to the edge. Araki states that, quote, there were limitations on how he could write Jonathan because he was a symbol of justice, so he may be a bit on the boring side. I solidified his character as a win. Jonathan is passive, reacting to Dio's various attacks, and this leads to him discovering his way of life." End quote. As stated, Dio's psychological and physical torture towards Jonathan, making his peers dislike him, the love of his life avoid him, as well as killing his last remaining friend Danny, who saved Jonathan when he was young, cementing their friendship forever. All of these actions combined with the feelings that Jonathan had of just being less than Dio, as he's not as smart nor as strong, made Jonathan choose the path of righteousness and made him value his honor. For example, when Dio targets Erina and Jonathan's relationship, which after Jonathan finds out, with honor on the line, and yeah, you know how much he value his honor, he fights with such strength and determination as he knows that if he loses, then he would have to live in Dio's shadow for the rest of his youth. And after beating Dio's ass, some years pass as he continues his duality with Brando. Yes, the rhyming was intentional. Jonathan, After the seven years since Dio's arrival, George has been struck with an illness, but that's probably nothing. More importantly, Jonathan grew a lot, and I'm not just talking about muscles. No, Jonathan's physical strength aside, he evolved as a person, finally growing up and choosing his own way of life. Jonathan became the person that we'll see for the duration of Phantom Blood because of what Dio did towards him, since his growth came from seeing how evil a person can be and from that, he chose the path of righteousness. Of course, Jonathan never forgot the things that Dio did to him, however, he truly felt something for him, since they lived together for so many years. I personally feel like he wants to forgive Dio and embrace him as his own brother, 
but really can't since deep down inside he knows how evil he can be. Of course, this makes it even more sad when he murders George and rejects his humanity, as he betrays Jonathan in more than one way. But before that fight in the Joestar Manor, Jonathan has found a letter, making him believe that Dio is the reason behind his father's illness. This poisoning of Dio's adopted father George acts as a sort of climax of Jonathan and Dio's early duality in the first act of Phantom Blood. At this time, Jonathan goes to London to search for evidence of Dio's poisoning of his father. He also meets someone truly special there, at Ogre Street of all places. He encounters a couple of thugs, one of which is the legendary man beloved by everyone who has read Phantom Blood. That man, of course, being Tattoo. What you don't know he is? Well, he's this dude. Anyway, Tattoo attempting to stab Jonathan with a knife, after which Jonathan grabs it, shows his character growth so far in the story, as he's no longer a spoiled child. But this action also takes the attention of another man. This man's name, um... Granted, it is a pretty forgetful name, you know, why couldn't Iraqi have chosen a distinct, traditional British name, you know, like, Brad. Legendary Jojo character Chad Bradwagon. On a more serious note, Speedwagon shows something to Jonathan that he very much appreciates for the rest of his journey. Besides Speedwagon's eternal trust and love, more importantly, his secret power. I'm going to defeat you with the power of friendship! And also this gun I found. Okay, 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 I know it's cheesy, but listen. Without the support from his friends, Jonathan could not tap into the hidden potential and unleash his inner strength. This inner strength has shown itself earlier when Jonathan fought against Dio. You know, the second time when he did the Oro Oro? Yeah, that time. His inner strength here was utilized because of the circumstances of the fight. This special power within Jonathan also shows up towards the end of the story. But we're not there just yet, so I will elaborate on this power later when we actually get there. <laughs> Moving on a little later into the latter part of the first act, when Dio finally rejects his humanity, strengthening the contrast of Dio and Jonathan. Dio rejects his own mortality to become a stronger being, whilst Jonathan is just trying to cope with his own life and destiny. At this moment, Jonathan only has one goal left to fulfill, that being to stop the man who invaded his life, separated him from his love, killed his best friend and his father. By stopping Dio, he will protect those that he loves, and even if most of them already are dead, the Joestar legacy will never fall, especially not to an evil leech like Dio. In this very moment, Dio has set his own fate of being bound to the eternal fight between the Joestar bloodline and himself. The reasons for Dio's failure for the rest of the series all comes back to this very moment. Jonathan's fight with Dio in the Joestar Manor truly is just two men settling a dispute with extra fire and blood. It shows the length that Dio is willing to go if it means his victory, and later during the fight on the roof of the Joestar Manor, Jonathan flashes back to his youth, and he states, My youth was spent together with Dio, and now I must put an end to that time in my life. In this very moment, Jonathan no longer is a little immature child or insecure aristocrat. No, instead he's a true hero, a man like the various tales of legendary warriors to stand up for justice. Jonathan becomes a true man, someone his father would have been proud to have raised. But the battle between the brothers is cut short, as the manor burns down and the fight results in a stalemate. And as such, the journey to stop Dio begins. This second act of Phantom Blood is Jonathan seeking judgement and justice and of course, finally putting the endless conflict between Brando and Joestar to rest. Jonathan's journey of becoming a symbol of everything just begins here. But that will be for the next video, since I want to make a worthy part 2 and not just half-ass it. This is my first character study of a main Jojo, so I thought why not start with the first one. Jonathan was never anything special in my opinion, but after making this video, well, I can see him through a different light. I think he's pretty cool and I understand why people like him. I just don't understand how people will pick him over, well, you know, anyone else. <laughs> Anyways, 
I hope to see you in the continuation of the journey of Jonathan Joestar.